Hello everybody, I'm Peter. And I'm James. I'm John. And we're the youth team at Birmingham City Mission, a local Christian charity that serves the disadvantaged and marginalised of our city, regardless of their faith, beliefs or background. We want to teach people about Christian faith and to show God's love in practical ways. This includes feeding the homeless, handing out food parcels to families who are in need and looking after the elderly. In normal circumstances, we would be in school with you to do this assembly, but today we're doing it via video. So let's play that for you now. Back in 2012, there was a film called The Impossible. It covers the dramatic events that took place on Boxing Day back in 2004, before most of you was even born. It tells the story of one family's dream Christmas holiday in Thailand. Picture this, the sunny views, the beautiful sunshine, the sandy beaches, but calm suddenly turned into chaos as a huge earthquake struck, causing a giant tsunami. This is a massive tidal wave that swept across and swept across thousands of people, buildings and cars, causing massive destruction. In one sudden moment, this family's whole world was turned upside down. Their calm turned to chaos. Life can be like that sometimes. Take 2020, which started off relatively normally until the coronavirus crisis came out of nowhere and hit us. Covid swept across the world, causing such fear, death and uncertainty. You may know that feeling in your own lives, where everything seems normal when suddenly tragedy strikes. There's a knife attack in your area. Someone in your family loses their job or gets ill or dies. A relationship breaks up your future is thrown up in the air, anxiety hits you. And these things can come from nowhere and suddenly hit you like that tsunami. It causes chaos, that feeling that everything is out of control. It leaves you feeling shaken and scared, anxious and uncertain. Everything was calm, but now it's crisis. Jesus and his 12 close friends knew something got this. In Mark chapter 4 of the New Testament, it tells us that Jesus was once hanging out with his followers, known as disciples, nearby a lake, Lake Galilee, when he said to his friends, go across to the other side. So Jesus and his friends got into their fishing boat, which would have been smaller than a bus. They moved steadily across the lake, which was much, much larger than the one behind me. All was normal, the waters was calm, when suddenly crisis struck, a massive storm erupted. It says that a very strong wind came upon the lake. The waves came over the side into the boat, so that it was already full of water. It says that Jesus' friends were shaken, scared and terrified. As experienced fishermen, they would have seen lots of storms, but they were particularly freaked out about this one. Now it says that Jesus was in another part of the boat, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? You can sense the panic. You know, it's okay to show emotion, to recognise how you're feeling. It's human. It's okay to not be okay. And it's okay to ask for help. The disciples told Jesus about the problem. They asked for help, and that's key. They didn't keep it bottled up inside. They told Jesus, even though they didn't fully trust him or believe that he cared for them. But Jesus, he still helped. The narrative tells us that Jesus stood up and commanded the wind and said to the waves, quiet, be still. And then incredibly, the wind, it stopped and it became completely calm. The crisis turned to calm again, and Jesus and his followers made it safely across to the other side. This was because Jesus was with them in their boat. It says that they were awestruck, and they asked each other, who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. They were speechless. They knew that if the immortal had tried speaking to the weather, nothing would have changed. But here is someone who spoke to the wind and the waves to stop, 
and they stopped, just like that. The Bible says that Jesus, God the Son, has power over the weather, over the world, for he created it in the first place. That's why Jesus is so awesome. He can do whatever he chooses to do. And Jesus chose to leave heaven and be born in this world. This shows that he isn't only powerful, but he's also full of love for the people he made. In Jesus, God came to live among us some 2,000 years ago. And this shows us he cares about us and all of our problems. Our biggest problem is when we turn our backs on God and think that we can live without him and don't need his help. We all do this and it's really wrong and it's the root of all sin. This causes the relationship with God to disconnect. You know, like how Wi-Fi cuts out sometimes. Jesus repaired this connection when he died on a cross and later rose again. And in doing so, he made it possible for you to be reconnected to God. If you are truly sorry for your sins and trust in him, you can be forgiven of your wrongs and you can be brought back into friendship with God the Father. We haven't got time to go into detail about this now, but I'm sure you'll cover this in youth group. We can all take a number of things away from this narrative. Here's a few rhetorical questions for you to reflect on. Do you ever feel alone, I wonder? Well, the reality is that you're not alone. The Heads Together campaign says that we're all connected and you're not alone. Many other people will be feeling how you're feeling. And there are always other people who want to be in the boat with you and to hear your story and to journey with you through whatever storm you may be in. And most importantly, Jesus wants to be in your boat too, if you'll ask him to. Can you be someone who offers support to those in need? Being a good listener, a good friend, showing that you care, having their back, do you ever ask reliable people for help when you need it? You know, people like teachers, carers, your parents, your vicar, your pastor, your youth leader. People who care. We shouldn't do it alone. We need other people. You shouldn't suffer in silence. This is a really important topic. Let's see what these famous people have to say. You're speaking to anyone, uh, speaking to a teammate, a uh, friend, because your, your teammates have been through it, they've been through the ups and downs and they've come from the other side. If you're struggling, it's important to talk about it. Getting help isn't a sign of weakness, but a sign of strength. Talking about how you're feeling can make a real big difference. Talking about it can release all that bottled up emotion. The help that people offer and that God offers won't necessarily make the problem go away, but it will help you to face the problem. With the story, Jesus stopped the storm straight away, but his followers soon faced another crisis. But that's another story. But they were more equipped to deal with it because they knew that Jesus was with them. And in our everyday situations, when we seek help from God and from others, it doesn't mean that the problem will go away just like that, if at all. In fact, sometimes things will get harder for you because you are faithfully following Jesus. For example, you might be laughed at and rejected and left out by friends. But remember, God will help you to get through it. And with God, the problem won't seem quite as big as it did before. It's so important to keep positive, to not give up. With God, there's always hope and there's always help available. Where do you get your inner sense of calm from? Perhaps it's through, for example, talking to God, which is prayer, and talking to others. Maybe through exercising, walking, running, sports, gaming, music, art, dance, perhaps mindfulness. For me as a Christian, I find calm mainly through talking to God each day and hearing from him in the Bible, his word. The Bible says this, give all your cares and worries to God, for he cares for you. I wonder, do you believe this? The reality is that Jesus cares for his people. Do you spend a bit of time praying to God each day? 
Do you give your worries and cares to God? Well, why carry them by yourself when this powerful and loving God offers to carry your worries for you? Knowing that Jesus is with me gives me a sense of peace and calm each day amid the storms that I sometimes face. You know, even in the middle of a storm, you can have calm inside, just as the eye of the storm is the calmest place there. Talking about storms, going back to a film that we mentioned at the start, The Impossible, we left it as a tsunami struck. A mum, dad and the two sons were all separated. They did ask rescuers for help and they all tried to find each other. He had seen that it wouldn't be possible, but ultimately hope wins and they eventually reunite and they fly to safety, away from the destruction. Calm, it had returned. So we've seen that in life we'll have times of calm and crisis and then perhaps calm again. It varies. We can't control our circumstances, but we can control our response to it. I don't know if you are in a storm right now, but I can guarantee that you'll go through one at some point. That's life. When you're in a storm, remember the things that we've talked about today. Remember to ask God and others for help. And remember God's promise to always be with you no matter what. Why not take a minute now to pray about these things?